Hello, how are you? So how are you today? Where are you at? What's it like for you? I hope that you are doing well. All right, so today my question is, what's the sign that someone might be a false teacher? What are the warnings that someone might be a false teacher? What do you think? Well, Paul talks about it, and we're going to look at it, and then we are going to pray for discernment and wisdom. Amen? So let me just start by saying hello. Ndewa. Welcome to Dr. Ray Daily. Blessings and peace to you around the globe today. I think we should just open up with some prayer, ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us this day and in this moment. Let's get to the scripture, let's talk about it, and let's have a blessing. How's that sound? Let's do it. Lord God, I come before you right now, and I just pray for this one. I pray for peace. Lord God, I just pray you would create a sacred space around this one listening right now, just to put out the worries of the world, give them a moment, clear their mind, clear their space, help them to hear from you. Be present with us, Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit to fill us. Open our eyes, open our ears. Open our minds, open our hearts, open our spirits to you, Lord. And I pray for this one listening right now that you would have a special message, a special word from this one, from your word today for them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we are in 2 Corinthians 11 where Paul says to the Corinthians, I hope you'll put up with me with a little foolishness. Yes, please do put up with me. Look, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy promised you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as, as a pure virgin to him. <coughs> but I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preach, or if a different good news from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. What are you doing? I don't think I'm in the least inferior to these super apostles. I may indeed be an untrained as a speaker, but I do have knowledge. We have made this perfectly clear to you in every way. Was it a sin for me to lower myself in order to elevate you by preaching the good news of God to you free of charge? I robbed other churches by receiving support from them so that I could preach to you, so I could serve to you. And when I was with you and needed something, I was not a burden to anyone, for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied what I needed. I have kept myself from being a burden to you in any way, and I will continue to do so. Because as surely as the truth of Christ is in me, nobody in the regions of Achaia will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I do not love you. God knows I do love you, and I will keep on doing what I am doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. For such people, i me tell you what they are, they are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It's not surprising, then, if his servants, Satan's servants, also masquerade as servants of righteousness, rightness. Well, their end will be what their actions deserve. The word of the Lord. Hello, it is good to see you. What stood out to you today? Put it in the comments. Hello, aloha, Terry. Hey, Beverly. Hey, Leticia. Hey, Linda. Good to see you. What stood out to you today? Other than the air is still not great, I'm coughing. <laughs> Okay, we're good. I was just, oh, this is the microphone. I'm like, what's behind me? I got this ginormous microphone. Look at this thing. Actually, it's a real blessing. This got sent to me for free. I wasn't expecting it, but it's like, it's like intense. This is like the real deal. Look at, this is my head. Look how big this thing is. Yeah. I'm participating in an academic online, I mean, because we can't be in person, um, colloquium gathering of scholars and they sent us these uh, and I was like wow so yeah that's what that is all right <laughs> so we're trying it out does it sound better does it sound the same is it like a news broadcaster welcome to Dr. Barry Daly 
All right, let's get into the scripture. It's much more interesting. All right, so let's go to the top. Okay, so, for if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received, a different good news from the one you accepted, you put up with it easy enough. So what is he saying to them? That is really big. It is really big, Linda. Um, listen, Paul has been really pushing what is the goodness and you guys put in the comments i'm going to keep asking because if you get anything from hanging out with me i hope you get what is the good news what is the good news stick it in the comments what is the good news listen it is very important that if you are listening to someone that they are biblical now people interpret the bible in different ways right and for instance Somebody could say that I am a false teacher, not because of anything I say, but just because I'm a woman. <laughs> oh, so it's not that I, I have degrees in the Bible. I have two degrees in the Bible and a third, a PhD in the history of Christianity, which is more like, I don't know what you would call that. I know a lot of stuff about the Bible and God's people. Uh, but just the fact that I'm a woman, they would say, disqualifies me from a lot. But that's not what Paul says, does it? He doesn't say that because I'm a woman I should shut up and sit down. He says that if somebody is a false teacher, it has nothing to do with their gender or their race or their age or their even numbers of degrees. You don't have to have a bunch of degrees. What does he say? What does he say in verse 4? You guys tell me. What makes someone a false teacher? He says, if someone preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, and what is the Jesus he preached? And that gets to what is the good news? That Jesus Christ lived a son of, uh, he is the son of God who lived a sinless life. He was crucified. He died. On the third day, he was resurrected. That is the good news, my friend. There is no Christianity without the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You just have another noble sage, a philosopher, a teacher, right? Mm -mm. We have the Son of God who is resurrected. Without that, there is no Christianity. Anybody preaching anything other than the resurrected Son of God, then you need to be like, oh, weird. I'm going to back away. I don't want to listen to you. Anybody preaching a Jesus other than the Jesus we find in Scripture, walk away. Do you see all these, like, history documentaries, finding the true Jesus? Did he have a wife? Blah, blah, blah. Don't listen. I mean, listen to it, I guess, but that is not the Jesus of the New Testament. And if it is not the Jesus of our Bible, the Bible is your standard. If the Jesus of the Bible is not their Jesus, then you just look at that and say, that is a false teaching. That is error. And that means you're going to have to be in your Bible, reading your Bible, knowing your Bible, right? And it says someone teaches a different spirit from the spirit you received. You have received the Holy Spirit when you receive Christ as your Lord. And you need to learn discernment. You can get a bad feeling about something, right? You're like, something is off. Something's not right. And then you go to your Bible and you verify and you look, right? And I want to push you. Look a little farther than just what's been preached to you. Because preaching is always from an interpretation. I make an inter We all have the scripture in front of us. And different people read it a different way. And we just have to be as faithful as we are and as faithful as we can possibly be to it. Right? And there will be different interpretations. And there will be different apostles, as Paul calls them. Uh, different people. And that's okay. Right? But what must they have? The Jesus of Scripture. The Holy Spirit in their heart. And they must hold to the good news of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the sinless Son of God who was crucified and resurrected on the third day. And so it says, I do not think that I am in the least inferior to these super apostles. And now look at this. In his culture, because Paul came and didn't charge them, he came and ministered to them for free. He's like, I'm la you actually... Believe in these people because they charge you money to tell you false things, but you don't want to believe in me as an apostle because I'm free? I could say the same thing. <laughs> like, I see some people, and they are saying some nonsense. I, you know, even, like, televangelists I listen to, and I'm like, I mean, out of fairness, I don't actually listen to a lot of them. But I've heard pieces of what they say, and I think, no, I can't listen to you anymore. No. 
No. <gasps> right? Be discerning. Have wisdom. Amen. That's what this is all about. So I think that we should just, and look at this, for such people are false prophets, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Um, oh, I should know it. I just spaced out. What is the Tolkien quote? All, not all that shines is gold, right? So just because someone's shiny and flashy doesn't mean that they are filled with the Spirit of God. We must have discernment for who we are listening to. Amen. And if you think that I am a true um, Christian and lover of the Lord Jesus Christ, then please do share. Hit like, hit love, hit share, and share with your friends because there are so, someone was just sharing with me that she has a relative and uh, let's just say she's not sharing the good news of Jesus as we know the good news of Jesus. And she has like a thousand people. I don't know if she would even claim to be a Christian, but she has a thousand people watching live on YouTube. <sighs> we need to share the good news, friend. But look, it doesn't all have to be people listening to me. I want you to go share the good news. The good news is shared friend to friend. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for, let's pray for a blessing. And let's ask today for wisdom and discernment. Lord God, I come before you this day, and I pray for this one listening, and I pray for myself, Lord. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment. Father, when we see someone who loves you but is a little off in their theology, help us to show, still show love and respect for them, but maybe even just dialogue about it. But Father, if we see someone that is a false teacher, Father, reveal that to us so that we can walk away and we can warn others. Lord God, I just pray for discernment for this one listening right now, that you would heighten their spirit to be sensitive to something that is wrong and something that is off. Father, give them discernment, Father, so that they can be taught and grow and learn in you. And give them discernment, Father, so this one listening right now might also teach others. I pray for wisdom to fall on this one listening. Father, wisdom to understand, wisdom to discern, wisdom to understand your scriptures. Father, I just pray that you would help this one to read the word and understand it. Open the mind, open the heart, open the spirit of the one listening right now only to you. Fill this one with your spirit and let them shine with a true light. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, friends, put your prayer requests in the comments. I will go back and pray for you, and also the prayer team is looking at it. Feel free to pray for each other. Let everyone know you're praying for each other. And God willing, I will see you tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hit like, hit love, hit share, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye, friends.